Hi all, I am Dr. Sujit, nephrologist working in Gourmet Stanley Hospital and few private hospitals in Chennai. I would like to discuss uh, dialectic therapies available in our clinical practice. I will be discussing various dialectic therapies available in a routine clinical practice, the basic principles for each dialectic therapies. I will be discussing with the videos and pictures of uh, hemodialysis, continuous renal replacement therapies, plasma exchange, hemoperfusion, peritoneal dialysis and the various nursing uh, guidelines which we follow and we should educate our paramedical people. I would like to divide the therapies available in our clinical practice as extracorporeal that is occurring outside the, our body and the corporeal occurring inside our body. The extracorporeal the dialysis procedures are hemodialysis, continuous renal replacement therapy, plasma exchange and hemoperfusion. The corporeal that is the occurring dialysis occurring inside our body but that is our peritoneal cavity or intermittent peritone dialysis, continuous ambulatory peritone dialysis and automated peritoneal dialysis. We will see what is dialysis. We obtain the word dialysis from Greek language dialysis which means dissolution in Greek language. Dia means meaning through and lysis means loosening or splitting. Dialysis is the process of removing waste and excess fluid from the blood and is used primarily as an artificial replacement for the lost kidney function in people with kidney failure. Dialysis is used to remove fluid and uremic waste products from the body when the kidneys are not functioning very well. The indications for dialysis include acute or emergency indication in clinical situation when patient, patient presents with uremic pericarditis or uremic encephalopathy, when very high and rising levels of blood urea and serum creatinine is there, when patient presents with severe fluid overload and our pulmonary edema which is not responding to a standard line of medical therapy, when there is some refractive hyperkalemia or uncorrectable metabolic acidosis with medications. And sometimes it is given to remove certain poisons or medication overdose in the blood. Next is the maintenance hemodialysis or chronic uh, dialysis. We offer to patients with end-stage renal disease that is uh, CKD patients with uh, estimated glomerular filtration rate of uh, less than 15 ml per minute index to the body surface area. The basic principles include diffusion, ultrafiltration, convention, osmosis and adsorption. The solution has a solid particles dissolved in it we tell as a solutes and the liquid form we tell as a solvent. Coming to the basic principle diffusion, we have two solutions of different concentration of solutes. Uh, and uh, which are separated by a semi permeable membrane. Here, diffusion occurs uh, because of the movement of uh, solids from area of higher concentration solution to area of lower concentration solution, driven by an electrochemical gradient across the semi permeable membrane. The uh, exchange occurs uh, till the concentration of both sides of the solution, both sides of the solution becomes equal. Solids with higher concentration in the blood compartment such as potassium shown in solid circles and uremic toxins shown in open triangles diffuse through the membrane into the dialysis compartment. Conversely, solids with higher concentration in the dialysis such as bicarbonate represented by closed triangles diffuse into the blood compartment. Solids such as sodium and chloride open circles with concentration nearly equivalent between two compartments move little across the membrane. Inside the dialyzer, there is a movement of solid across semi permeable membrane which is driven by the concentration gradient between the blood and the dialysate site. Solid move from the side with higher concentration of particles to the side of a lower concentration solids that is from blood to the dialysate. Diffusion is best for clearing low molecular weight substances such as urea and creatine.
Ultrafiltration is the movement of a fluid through a semi-permeable membrane along a pressure gradient, which may be osmotic pressure gradient caused by glucose in peritoneal dialysis or hydrostatic pressure gradient in hemodialysis. In hemodialysis, positive pressure is created on the dead side of the membrane and negative pressure is created on the fluid side. This gradient positive negative influences the movement of fluid from blood side to the fluid side that is the dialysate side resulting in net fluid removal from the patient. We classify the molecules as substances which are clinically important to our body system as small molecules with molecular weight less than 150 daltons and middle molecules with 150 daltons to 5000 molecular weight and large molecules with more than 5000 uh, daltons by molecular weight. These uh, substances which is uh, present in the excess level in our body are harmful to us. Convention across a semi-permeable membrane occurs when a hydrostatic pressure is applied to the blood compartment which causes the solvent to flow across the membrane into the dialysate compartment, bringing along with it the solids. It tells this as solvent drag. As a result for solids with sieving coefficient close to 1, there is no change in uh, concentration in the blood compartment with time. Convection occurs when solids are transferred across a semi permeable membrane with plasma water in response to a hydrostatic pressure gradient that is created on the blood side of the hemofilter. Convection enhances the removal of low and middle molecular weight substances. Adsorption is the adherence of solids and biological matter to the surface of membrane. Sorbents are used which are substances that because of their physical and chemical characteristics adsorb on their surface other elements. Activated charcoal is commonly used for removal of certain toxins and some medication given in overdose. Osmosis is the movement of fluid from area of lesser concentration to an area of greater concentration as shown in this example by fresh water and salt water. The peritoneal dialysis utilizes our peritoneal capillaries which act like a semi-permeable membrane containing the blood with the higher concentration of uremic solids. We install dialysate into the peritoneal cavity. The glucose inside the peritoneal cavity in the dialysate forms the creates an osmotic force which sucks the fluid from the blood leading to osmosis. In contrast to hemodialysis in which pressure that is applied is hydrostatic, in peritoneal dialysis we apply osmotic pressure which is created by the intraperitoneal installation of hypertonic dialysate which is usually glucose in the form of 1.5% 2.5% or 4.25% of dextrose in the form of glucose monohydrate. Higher concentration of glucose exit higher osmotic pressure and have a greater effect on ultrafiltration. As the blood in the peritoneal capillaries comes into the contact with the dialysate in the peritoneal cavity, solids in the blood diffuse into the dialysate. Solid transfers occurs across the peritoneal capillaries, which is bidirectional. Solid such as urea, creatinine, and potassium diffuse from the bloodstream into the dialysate, 
whereas glucose diffuses from the dialysate into the peritoneal capillaries. The osmotic gradient created by the glucose in the dialysate affects ultrafiltration of the water from the blood into the dialysate. Over a period of time, glucose diffuses from the dialysate into the peritoneal cavities, which leads to the dissipation of osmotic gradient and slows the rate of diff ultrafiltration. This is the schematic diagram of a hemodialysis machine. The blood pump inside the hemodialysis machine takes the blood out of the body for dialysis. So since the blood outside the body will clot, we have a heparin for, to avoid clotting. And uh, we prepare a dialysis from acid can and the bicarbonate and uh, reverse osmosis water and we give it inside the dialysis. The diffusion and ultrafiltration and the various uh, convection occurs inside the dialyzer and uh, after the dialysis, the patient is given the dialyzed blood. So we have to be careful that uh, no air enters the patient uh, while retaining the patient blood. So we have an air bubble deductor and a clamp to prevent any air accumulating after dialysis being given to the patient. The blood circuit is divided in the artery line which takes blood from the patient to the dialyzer for dialysis and the venous line which is the segment which returns the dialyzed blood back to the patient. In the artery line we divide the segment into pre-blood pump segment and post-blood pump segment. In pre-blood pump segment we have a saline infusion set and saline line and the post-blood pump segment we have a heparin line for giving heparin. The blood pump rotates at the rate of 200 to 400 milliliter per minute and the dialysis pump rotates double times at the blood pump and in the venous line there is an ultrasonic air detector which senses any air collected in the venous line. Whenever air collected is in the venous line there is a clamp which automatically prevents the air containing venous blood entering or returning back to the patient. There are two sensors the arterial, monitoring the arterial pressure and the venous pressure. How to prepare the dialysis? When we mix a concentrated soda bicarbonate and calcium chloride, it leads to the precipitation of calcium carbonate. This precipitation is avoided by separating the concentrated soda bicarbonate from the rest of the constituents of the dialysate, which is the A concentrated or B cell as acid concentrate. To reduce further the risk of calcium carbonate formation, an acid is added to the acid concentrate. This keeps the pH of the final dialysate below 7.4. Of, for this reason, we, se we separate acid can and the bi bicarbonate can. So the final dialysate is prepared by taking one part of the acid with 1.8% of the base that is bicarbonate and mixing it with 34 parts of the reverse osmosis water which comes in the back side of the machine. Most of centers, bicarbonate is available in powder form. The bicarbonate powder is mixed manually around 285 grams of bicarbonate powder with the appropriate volume of reverse osmosis water around 10 liters prior to connecting machine. In few centers, bicarbonate powder comes in a ready-made form filled with a cartridge and is attached to the machine. With the cartridge form, water is delivered to the cartridge and the concentrated solution is used directly from the cartridge by the machine. Therapeutic hemodialysis is most often used to treat kidney failure by equilibrating the blood against an iso-osmotic dialysate. Vital solutes are added to the dialysate at concentration designed to mimic those normally maintained in the blood by the native kidney. The resetting dialysate is essentially a physiological salt solution that in addition to creating a gradient for removal of unwanted solutes also provides another vital function of normal kidney that is maintaining a constant physiological concentration of extracellular electrolytes. So here the dialysate used in hemodialysis is has very low distress concentrate and the buffer is a bicarbonate. The monitor in the hemodialysis machine displays an air detector, blood leak, arterial pressure monitoring, 
venous pressure membrane monitoring and the transmembrane pressure which is the difference between the pressure in the blood side minus the dialysate side and the conductivity uh, so readings and the blood flow reading and the rate at which heparin is given and the ultra filtration to be removed and the time for dialysis left over The term artificial kidney is a broad terminology used for a device which removes uh, uremic solids and other harmful substances in the body with uh, excess fluid from the patient in the extracorporeal circuit. When the predominant removal is through diffusion, we tell as a hemodialyzer, and when the predominant removal is through convection, we tell as a hemofilter, and the, when the predominant uh, removal is through adsorption, we tell as a hemoperfusion, and the device used as a charcoal filter. The major components of the dialyzer are blood ports, which are uh, arterial port carrying blood into the dialyzer and venous port carrying blood outside the dialyzer and two ports for uh, dialysate entering into the dialyzer and uh, used to dialysate we tell us effluent creating out going out of the dialysate port. We have an header in the blood port. The blood enters the arterial header space and the dialysed blood enters the venous header space before entering the venous blood port. Blood enters and leaves the dialyzer through the dialyzer header and is rapidly dissipated into a series of narrow diameter parallel capillary rays, which are around 10,000 in number. The hollow capillary fibers are anchored to the dialyzer casing with a porting material. The baffle is placed at both the dialysis inlet and outlet to direct the incoming and outflowing dialysate. This is the cut section of the dialyzer. This is the interior of the dialyzer. It shows the inner diameter of the capillary fiber around 200 micrometer and the membrane thickness around 20, 20 micrometer and the material commonly used are polysulfone. Polyether sulfone is also used and the membrane surface pore size is around 5 nanometer. The dialysis prescription, the duration of dialysis is usually 4 hours. The first few dialysis we restrict to 2 or 3 hours. The dialysate bath we use is bicarbonate bath. The blood flow around 250 milliliter per minute and the dialysate flow is double times. The anticoagulant commonly uses in, uh, this conventional heparin and sometimes we give uh, erythropoietin injection and uh, packed blood transfusion is given during uh, uh, dialysis for correction of anemia. And we also give antibiotics and any antibiotics when patient develops chills or rigor during dialysis. Vascular recess is the site where we take blood from the patient for dialysis. Dialysis is a temporary uh, untunneled catheter uh, is commonly used in emergency situation or when patient is started on hemodialysis in a CKD patients also, stage 5. The advantage is it's used immediately. The problem with using a temporary catheter is it has got high infection risk and high thrombosis risk, particularly when inserted in subclavian vein and it's also had high mortality. The sites used are internal jugular followed by femoral and subclavian vein. We use permanent uh, hemodialysis catheter when there is a uh, vessel uh, problems for creating a fistula or AV graft. And uh, this uh, permanent catheter has a long life. It can come last up to around five years. Here we create a subcutaneous tunnel so that uh, the risk of infection is not there. And the catheter size is also more than that of a temporary catheter.
For patients undergoing a long-term maintenance hemodialysis, we plan an artery venous fistula or an artery venous graft. Whenever possible, a fistula should be given the option. And uh, here the vein is cut cross and attached to the end to side to the artery. Usually the radial artery and cephalic artery are uh, usually used at the wrist. The high pressure in the artery dilates and thickens the vein. It's the best alternative. It's got low infection risk and has got a longer life with the least thrombosis. The drawbacks is a, it takes a maturation time for the vein to mature. It is around 2 to 4 months. And the maturity rate is around 60 to 70 percent. But it is the ideal for all patients undergoing maintenance hemodialysis. We also use uh, artery venous graft made up of a uh, biocompatible material that is polytetrafluoroethylene attached end to side of an artery and vein. It is often required in patients with vascular disease with occluded and occluded distal veins. The advantage is it is ready to use when the solving results we can use uh, within two weeks of creation and it is uh, able to use in most patients. But the drawback of this uh, AV graft is called high stenosis and thrombosis rate. Traditionally, nephrologists have managed acute kidney injury with intermittent hemodialysis. The main disadvantage is the risk of systemic hypertension, which occurs in approximately 20 to 30 percent of hemodialysis treatment. Approximately 10 percent of acute kidney injury patients cannot be treated with intermittent hemodialysis because of hemodialysis instability. Continuous renal replacement therapy includes a spectrum of dialysis method developed specifically for treatment of the critically ill patients with acute kidney injury who could not undergo traditional intermittent hemodialysis because of hemodynamic instability or in whom intermittent hemodialysis could not control volume or metabolic derangements. The slower solid clearance and the removal of fluid per unit of time with continuous renal replacement therapy as compared with intermittent hemodialysis is thought to allow for better hemodynamic tolerance. Continuous renal replacement therapy requires a central double lumen venous venous catheter and an extracorporeal circuit and a hemofilter and a blood pump and an effluent pump. The blood circuit for continuous renal replacement therapy is usually venous venous circuit. Venous blood is removed from the circulation through one lumen of a double lumen large bore catheter and passes through a peristaltic pump which generates the perfusion pressure that drives the ultrafiltration of plasma water across a biosynthetic hemofiltration membrane, thus removing the volume. Pressure difference between the blood and the ultrafiltrate causes plasma to be filtered across. This causes solvent drag for small and large molecules across the membrane, leading to the removal of from the blood. The ultrafiltrate containing the solid should be replaced by substitution fluid. Substitution fluid must have near physiological levels of electrolytes and buffer and should be sterile. Coming to the components of uh, CRRT machine, uh, 
all these uh, pumps and the lines are color coded the blood pump and line are uh, comes in red color and the pre blood pump and lines comes in uh, gray color and the effluent pump and lines comes in uh, yellow color the dialysis pump and uh, lines comes in green color and the replacement pump and line comes in uh, violet color blood pump controls the blood flow right through the stocarpel cir circuit pre blood pump controls the flow so rate of solutions mainly the regional anticoagulants that is the citrate into the blood flow blood inflow line before the blood pump a fluent or ultra filtered pump controls the rate of total fluid removal from the filter replacement pump controls the rate of replacement fluid into the blood inflow line pre dilutional or in the blood flow out flow line that is a post dilutional the dialysis pump controls the rate of dialysis flow into the filter the pre blood pump and replacement pump and dialysis pump can generate a flow of 3130 ml per minute or 8000 ml per hour the dialysis pump can generate a maximum of 450 ml per minute below the machine there will be four bags that is a fluent bag identified by the yellow line and the pre blood pump bag identified by the gray line and the dialysis bag identified by the connecting green line and the replacement bag identified by the tube with the violet line we have pots and clamps in the crt machine we have an assess pressure pod is a pressure sensor that measures pressure required to pull blood from the patient then we have a blood leak detector which monitors the effluent line for the presence of red blood cells and we have an effluent pressure pod which is a pressure sensor that measures the pressure required to push or pull ultra filtrate from the blood and the return pressure pod which is a pressure sensor that measures the pressure required to push blood back to the patient and a return line clamp is a clamp line if air bubbles are detected to prevent the air returning to the patient the line will be clamped and we have a filter pressure pod which is a pressure sensor sensor that measures the pressure required to push blood through the filter we have a sampling fork for taking samples during uh, the crt procedure and we have a deaeration chamber which removes air in the filter set prior to the returning it to the patient and air bubble detector monitors for the air bubble within the return line we have a weighing scale which are sensitive scales allowing precise control for flow rates the bags in used in crt are one is the uh, substitution or replacement bag and another is the uh, citrate bag which we give for anticoagulation this is the composition of crt uh, fluid dialysis fluid calcium is around 1.75 millimole magnesium is 0.5 millimole and uh, sodium is 140 millimole and chloride is 0.110 uh, millimole and the lactate is the buffer coming to the crt prescription we calculate the dosing that is the volume of the effluent fluid it is uh, around uh, 20 to 25 ml per kg per hour suppose for a 60 kg patient we calculate around uh, 1200 to 1600 ml usually we choose the higher volume that is uh, in this case 1600 ml so we get distributed into 800 ml of dialysis and uh, 800 ml of replacement and uh, 100 ml of ultra filtration the monitor displaying blood flow rate here 110 ml per minute 
and uh, dialysate flow around uh, 1000 ml per hour and the replacement of fluid is given at uh, 500 ml per uh, hour and the effluent dose is uh, 25 ml per kg per hour and the filtration fraction is uh, around 30% and the ultra filtration dose is uh, 13 ml per kg per hour here we also have monitor the pressure that is assess pressure filtration pressure effluent pressure and the transmembrane drop of pressure also or increase in pressure is also monitored by the monitor we monitor all the events occurring in the crt by a flow chart which has an bp recording and blood flow rate at the rate given in ml per minute here it is around 110 and the various pressures here the assess pressure is around minus 18 to 38 and the filter pressure is around 180 to 118 and the effluent pressure is it ranges around in this chart minus 44 to 62 minus 62 and the return pressure and the transmembrane pressure transmembrane pressure when there's a clotting it increases here you started with the 94 and it is gone up to 120 uh, millimeters of mercury only but there is not much of clotting and the dialysate flow flow here it is 1000 ml per hour and the replacement of fluid given at the rate of 500 ml per hour and the pre blood flow rate is around uh, less than 1000 ml per hour and the ultra filtered removal also is mentioned and the effluent dose is also mentioned and we do an abg to monitor the clinical situation which is also mentioned in the back side of the flow chart in clinical situations so the, the some the antibodies are very destructive and uh, causes a various clinical situation in therapeutic plasma paresis we remove the plasma causing the deleterious or harmful antibodies uh, causing the worse or worsening in the clinical situation many situation are used so commonly we use in good pasteur syndrome or anti glomerular -glom -glom basement membrane disease thrombotic thrombocytopenic porphyria or hemolytic uremic syndrome antibody mediated graft rejection and acute demyelinating polyneuropathy like uh, gulenbar syndrome and of late uh, radcler poisoning is very much used in uh, clinical situation in blood bank they remove uh, plasma by a uh, centrifugal pump uh, where uh, the components of uh, blood are separated namely red blood cells uh, platelets and wbc are separated and the plasma which containing harmful antibodies and uh, immunoglobulins are removed separately we can also remove the plasma containing antibodies or immunoglobulins uh, causing the harmful clinical diseases uh, by removing blood from the patient uh, through a plasma filter and uh, the removed plasma is separately collected to to replace the plasma volume uh, we give albumin or fresh frozen plasma with the colloids that is a uh, ringer lactate we do plasma exchange in the regular hemodialysis machine but we replace plasma filter instead of hemodialyzer in the same port or stand where we keep the hemodialyzer here as you see the plasma filter one port is kept closed because there is no dialysis occurring we are just removing the harmful plasma this chart monitors the plasma exchange occurring uh, in our uh, ward here weight is calculated and the volume of plasma tumor removed is uh, 
calculated bedside wise uh, roughly 40 ml per kg here it comes around 2500 ml the starting bp and uh, closing bp are uh, measured and monitored and in during the procedure also the blood pressure is monitored frequently and uh, the volume of plasma removed is replaced by albumin or sometimes uh, uh, fresh plasma plasma fresh plasma plasma around 8 to 10 uh, may be needed to replace and uh, we also replace the plasma with uh, ringer lactate here the volume removed is around 2500 ml and it is replaced with oral albumin next we see the extracorporeal removal of poison here we use a charcoal filter instead of a dialyzer the principle is absorption Extracorporeal treatment can remove certain medicines given in over dosage. By using hemoperfusion, that is through activated charcoal filter, we can remove carbamazine over dosage or phenobarbital over dosage. By using a dialyzer through hemodialysis, we can remove ethylene glycol, lithium, methanol. We, by using a hemo filter, we can remove a methotrexate and procainamide dosage uh, poisoning given in excess. We can remove salicylate or valproate either by hemodialysis or hemoperfusion. This is the charcoal filter we use for hemoperfusion based on the absorption principle. It contains around 300 grams of activated charcoal. Blood flow is driven by the normal dialysis machine which we use and there is no ultrafiltration, no fluid removal and no dialysis occurs. This is the patient undergoing a hemoperfusion through charcoal filter. You can see the charcoal filter kept above the dialysis port stand. Sometimes when the patient is renal, having renal failure, following hemoperfusion through charcoal filter, we can do dialysis following the Hema charcoal filter line. Using the same dialysis machine, we take blood and through a charcoal filter, we remove the toxins, that is the drug overdosage, and we can remove paracut poisoning also. And through absorption, the blood is again returned back to the patient. This is the summary of uh, extracorporeal removal of uh, uh, various uh, solids uh, which is in excess causing deleterious effect to the body. The small molecules are removed effectively by hemodialysis by diffusion clearance uh, and the middle molecules uh, are removed effectively by hemofiltration by convection principle. The large molecules that is the immunoglobulins and antibodies uh, and even light chains are removed by therapeutic plasma exchange. Coming to the corporal uh, treatment, that is the peritone dialysis. Here, the waste and fluids are removed from the blood inside the body using a peritoneum as a natural semipermeable membrane. Waste and excess water move from the blood across the peritoneal membrane and into the special dialysis solution called the dialysate in the abdominal cavity. The main indication for peritone dialysis for a young patient so that they can be at home and they can also attend the school also and they will have a proper caretaker but mostly mother or some other relatives and patient with vascular access problems, difficult vessels are frequent a fistula failures. Patient with diabetes and cardiovascular disease where they are prone for frequent interdiality hypertension and they will sometimes because of low ejection fraction of the heart they will have very low blood pressure also. Some institutions also do intermediate peritone dialysis. 
ఫర్ పేషెంట్ విత్ లో బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ఆన్ ఐన్ డ్రోప్స్ అండ్ వెంటిలేటర్ పేషెంట్ సో టెంపరీ దే డూ బిఫోర్ మేకింగ్ ద పేషెంట్ స్టేబుల్ ఆన్ హీమో డయాలిసిస్ హియర్ ద ఇన్సిడ్ టెంపరీ పెరిటోనల్ డయాలిసిస్ పెరిటోనల్ డయాలిసిస్ కతీటర్ ఇన్సైడ్ ద అబ్డమ్ జస్ట్ బిలో ద అంబ్లికర్స్ అండ్ ద ఇన్స్టూడ్ ఇన్స్టిల్ ఏ పెరిటోనల్ డయాలిసిస్ ఫ్లూయిడ్ హియర్ ద ఫ్లూయిడ్ కమ్స్ అరౌండ్ వన్ టు వన్ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ లీటర్స్ we have two modalities that is a continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis which is performed by gravity and a patient or caretaker themselves they do and automated peritoneal dialysis which is done by a machine we tell as a cycler it is usually performed at the night so that patient can um, be free of the dialysis inside the peritoneal cavity during the day time the cpd catheter is insert inside the abdomen just para amplically usually it can be surgically created and even laparoscopically can be created but nowadays we insert bedside inside an ordinary sterile room in nearby our ward the after creation the cpd catheter will be in situ in the outside the abdomen and the try to be having a transfer set and then cap which can be kept inside a sterile cloth belt worn out in above the waist by the patient peritone dialysis system showing the relationship of the catheter to the abdominal wall structure a single lumen silicon roof rubber catheter traverses or passes passes inside the abdominal wall is used to assess the peritoneal cavity Ideally, the catheter is positioned with the tip in the true pelvis. Chronic catheters are most commonly supplied to two Dacron cuffs. The deep cuff preferentially implanted into the muscle, that is the rectus abdominis, to provide firm tissue ingrowth and fixes the catheter to the muscle. The superficial cuff is positioned in the subcutaneous tissue 2 to 4 cm from the exit side. Then properly positioned, the superficial cuff cuff serves as an effective barrier for entry of subcutaneous debris and bacteria into the subcutaneous tract the exchange includes a infusion dull and drainage the infusion we infuse 2 to 3 liters of dialysate into the abdominal cavity the fluid goes inside by the gravity it goes for around 5 to 10 minutes the dull time or the equilibration time allows diffusion and osmosis to occur inside the peritoneal cavity it is around 4 hours drainage time that the spent dialysate is drained after dialysis it is separated separated uh, collected at a drain bag and tube the lock இது வந்து இந்த ட்ரெயின் ஆகிறது இதை ஓப்பன் பண்ணோம்னா இது மேலே ஏற்றுறதுக்கு இது ஓப்பனில் இருக்கு இப்போ ட்ரெயின் ஆகிட்டு அதே ஓப்பன் பண்ணால் ட்ரெயின் ஆகும் சரி we have an automated peritoneal dialysis where we use a cycler for doing dialysis in cpd patient or attendant does the exchange procedure the components include a cycler and a cassette and connecting tubes and drainage bag and the apd dialysis which is around 6 to 7 liters of fluid as yes, we will see the cassette and tubings of the uh, cycler used in the uh, apd dialysis uh, the first line from the right is the drain line which goes to the separate drain bag the second line is the red line identify the red clamp with the line it goes to the apd bag used for dialysis in above the cycler and the next few lines are the additional dialysis line for the subsequent uh, bags for performing apd dialysis and the last line is the patient line which goes to the patient catheter
this is the patient undergoing apd by the cycler kept beside him uh, the apd bag is kept above the cycler and the drain bag is kept below the patient in the separate tray in the floor so here the patient is near the cycler and at night the exchange happens and he is free by the day to continue his other activities so important message which everyone should follow particularly paramedics we should save the non dominant down for future vascular access creation when over the glomerular filtration rate drops less than 30 ml per minute on the non dominant arm because we create a fistula or graft in the non dominant arms only arms and forearms only so no bp measurement should be taken and no iv lines or no blood drawn should be taken done from the non dominant arm usually the vascular access is created whenever the uh, hemodialysis is uh, anticipated uh, within a year i would like to conclude by uh, emphasizing or uh, reinforcing that uh, dialysis removes only the water soluble or protein unbound molecules in the blood CRRT is used for unstable acute kidney injury patients. Peritone dialysis is offered for young CKD patients. Hemoperfusion removes a few poisons. Preserve upper vessel limbs from CKD stage four. I would like to thank the patients from whom the I learned the clinical material and my professors my colleagues and post graduates and my dialysis technician who have been very cooperative and motivating me to do this 